All right, guys, this is an emergency situation. The absurd fiend known as Blackbeard is holding my YouTube subscribe button hostage. And the only way that we can defeat him is by clicking that button, subscribing to this channel, and thus overwhelming Blackbeard with regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. I'm counting on all of you in this fight. Now let us go forth and destroy Blackbeard with an overwhelming quantity of short form videos. Thank you. Using the tremendous power that he stole from Whitebeard's body, the pirate Blackbeard, supported by his 10 Titanic captains, is now considered in the same league as that of Redhead Shanks, Big Mom, and Kaido. And so, the rest of the world now labels him as one of the four emperors. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today, we're going to be casting our gaze on an increasingly alarming endgame group of villains known as the Blackbeard Pirates. The Blackbeard Pirates are a group of profoundly sinister individuals who command an immense control of the new world. A lot of this can be attributed to their captain, Marshal D. Teach, also known as Blackbeard himself, who is currently recognized as one of the four emperors of the sea, thus granting him a rather weighty level of infamy and influence. However, just as with most crews, the Blackbeard Pirates did come from very humble beginnings. And at one stage, this group was a mere dream of its captain, Teach, whose first foray into the world of piracy would be to join the Whitebeard Pirates as a young boy. Here, Teach would be considered a son of Whitebeard, as well as brother of his crewmates and was even eventually in line to become the commander of Whitebeard's second division. Although Teach turned down the role and instead encouraged poor Castillas to take it on. And part of the reasoning for this would become apparent imminently, as it turns out that Teach had been using the Whitebeard pirates in the hopes of encountering a certain devil fruit known as the Yami Yami no Mi, a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate and become darkness. And as was fate, this fruit was found by Thatch, the commander of the fourth division. And at this point, after more than two decades of service, Teach betrayed the Whitebeard pirates by murdering Thatch and consuming the Yami Yami no Mi. He then fled the crew in favor of now forming his own and adopted the name of Blackbeard. And as of right now, it's unknown as to how he recruited his initial six members, but the first incarnation of the Blackbeard Pirates consisted of the following. Jesus Burgess, a very tall and broad man who adopted the role of helmsman aboard the ship. Burgess is well known for his raw power, being capable of feats such as picking up entire buildings and throwing them at his enemies. In addition to this, he has also been shown capable of phenomenal endurance, having tanked shockwaves produced by both Whitebeard through the Guru Guru no Mi and Sengoku through the Hito Hito no Mi Mono Daibutsu. Also aboard this initial voyage was Lafitte, who is also known as the Demon Sheriff due to his excessively cruel actions as a sheriff in West Blue. And at face value, he would appear to be one of the more cheerful and easygoing members of the crew, although his clockwork orange-like design also implies that he is an ultra-violent being lying under this exterior. Lafitte also appears to have the ability to produce wings and fly, although whether or not this is due to him being a Devil Fruit user is still yet to be confirmed at the time of this recording, although it more than likely is. And finally, Lafitte serves as the navigator of the crew. Next up is the crew sniper, Van Alga, whose marksmanship has been shown to be quite possibly the greatest in the entire series. Unfortunately, little is known about his history though, except that at some stage, he adopted the epithet of the supersonic. Also notably in the Viz and Funimation translations, he is referred to as Van Ogre rather than Van Alga. And last up for now, we have Doc Q and his horse Stronger, with Doc Q being rather predictably the crew's doctor. Now, both of these characters are depicted as being consistently sick and in chronic pain, to the point where they will both cough up blood, which is, you know, pretty ironic for a doctor, but this does not mean that Doc Q is physically weak by any means, as he has still shown superhuman capacities, particularly that of speed, and he even chooses to fight with a scythe. And there we have the initial makeup of the Blackbeard Pirates. And they may look like a ragtag bunch, but they were an incredibly formidable force even at this stage in the game. In fact, the very first mention we have of the Blackbeard Pirates in the series is when they were said to have raided Drum Island, which was what initially caused Warpole to flee prior to the Straw Hats' arrival. However, their first official appearance would be on Jaya Island, where they and the Straw Hats cross paths for the first time. And here, after meeting Luffy, Blackbeard decided to incorporate him into his plan and the crew attempted to capture him. However, they were foiled by fate as the Straw Hats managed to escape on the knockup stream and sailed upwards to Skypiea. But I mentioned the word fate there because this concept is very important to all of the Blackbeard pirates who believe strongly in a greater force. If something is meant to be, then it will be. And if it isn't, then there is no use in lamenting it. This is the philosophy of the entire crew. And rather notably, this belief can often make especially Blackbeard himself act in a very reckless manner. And he has, on occasion, knowingly put his own crew in danger, basically allowing fate to take the wheel. So in many ways, Blackbeard is kind of like an alternate Luffy, as our protagonist is also highly subject to fate, even if he doesn't know it or believe in it. Blackbeard, on the other hand, seems well aware 
that he has a purpose in this world and as such is patiently striving towards it. But speaking of Luffy, the reason why Blackbeard wanted to capture him was to claim his 100 million berry bounty and submit himself as a candidate to become a warlord of the sea, a position that opened up after the defeat of Sir Crocodile. But as it turns out, Luffy was not the destined target, but fate would provide the Blackbeard pirates with another opportunity to progress in the world. And it would do this by delivering Port Gasty Ace to them on Panaro Island following the events of any slobby. And Ace was here to pursue and take revenge on Blackbeard for killing Thatch, leading the two to engage in combat with Blackbeard proudly displaying the abilities of the Yami Yami no Mi for the first time and managing to completely overwhelm Ace. Blackbeard then turned Ace over to the world government and secured a spot as one of the seven warlords of the sea. For a very, very short time that is, because the Blackbeard pirates almost immediately used his influence to stage an invasion of the underwater prison in Pearl Down, making their way to the secret level six, which held the most notorious and dangerous of prisoners. And these prisoners were then made to fight to the death, with the survivors being offered a place on the Blackbeard pirates, who would go on to reveal their new form at the tail end of the Paramount War. And from level six of Impel Down, the Blackbeard pirates recruited Katarina Devon, known as the Crescent Moon Hunter and the most dangerous female pirate to have ever been incarcerated in the prison. Devon is also a highly sadistic individual, as can be seen with her proficiency wielding a whip, although she has also been seen as highly competent with a spear. Another infamous criminal recruited was that of heavy drinker Vasco Shot, a particularly vicious individual who seems to care for nothing except for drinking and killing. Then there's Valo Pizarro, whose epithet is the Corrupt King, a notion that is distinguished in his clothing because unlike all of the other inmates, Pizarro was dressed not in prison garb, but instead maintaining his regal robes. However, he was so awful to the people of his kingdom that a rebellion was instigated and Pizarro was overthrown. And the final recruit from level six would be the colossal battleship San Juan Wolf, who possesses a devil fruit that allows him to grow and become the largest humanoid being in the entire world. Now that takes care of the other level six death match, but the Blackbeard Pirates would also be joined by Shiryu, a former warden of Impel Down, who was imprisoned for his own brutality towards both prisoners and subordinates, and who was foolishly released by Magellan in order to assist him with the invasion of the Blackbeard Pirates, as well as the mass breakout being conducted concurrently by Straw Hat Luffy. And in fact, it would be Shiryu who we have to thank for the entirety of the Blackbeard Pirates being alive today, as he provided them with an antidote to Magellan's poison after the warden completely wrecked them and left them to die. In any case, the full force of the new Blackbeard Pirates would now assemble at Marineford with the goal of killing Whitebeard, who had invaded the Marine headquarters in an attempt to save Ace, who once again, we have Blackbeard to thank for for being there in the first place. And by this stage, Whitebeard had suffered grievous wounds, and so the combined might of the Blackbeard pirates were able to finish him off and end the era of the strongest man in the world. The madness did not stop there though, because Blackbeard had yet another cunning plan, one that to this day, we are still not entirely sure how he pulled off, but under the cover of a dark sheet, Blackbeard was able to extract the power of Whitebeard's Gora Gora enemy and incorporate it into his own body, thus becoming the first person in known history to wield two devil fruit powers at once. Shortly after this though, Shanks and the red hair pirates arrived to put a stop to the war, prompting the Blackbeard pirates to retreat into the new world. At some stage, encountering and easily defeating Jewelry Bonnie, although they were forced to abandon her when Marine Admiral Akeen was spotted traveling their way. But from here, the Blackbeard Pirates would rapidly expand over the next two years, going from a mere handful of members to developing their own fleet, with each of the aforementioned members, Bar Stronger, becoming known as one of the 10 Titanic captains under the command of Admiral Blackbeard. And during the time skip, the Blackbeard Pirates were also involved in an event known as the Payback War, whereby the remnants of the Whitebeard Pirates launched an attack on Teach and his crew, which resulted in the overwhelming defeat and eventual dissolution of the Whitebeard Pirates, which went on to solidify Blackbeard's power in the new world and led him to achieving recognition as one of the four emperors of the sea. Although it isn't simply marines and pirates that the crew would go into target, as after the events of the Dress Rosa arc, Jesus Burgess was able to stow away and discover the location of the Revolutionary Army's headquarters on the island of Baltigo, which prompted Blackbeard to order an immediate attack. And while we don't know much about the details of said attack or why it was conducted, the Blackbeard pirates did successfully destroy the base, although they retreated after the arrival of Cypherpol. And more recently, the Revolutionary Army were able to take a bit of revenge for this action as its commanders prevented an attack by the Peachbeard Pirates who were incorporated into and allowed to sail under the flag of the Blackbeard Pirates with the commanders very easily dispatching Captain Peachbeard. And now I'm going to throw up a bit of a good old spoiler warning for fans who are not yet caught up to modern events because the Wano arc has given us some great scattered information regarding the Blackbeard Pirates in the intermission portions between act one and two as well as acts two and three. So if you don't want spoilers then please do skip to this time in the video. However, for everyone else, here we go. 
Following Act 1 of Wano, we learnt that the home base of the Blackbeard Pirates was an island known as Hachinosu, which is often translated as Beehive Island in scans, or Fuller Lead Island in the official English version. The idea with both being that it's supposed to represent a colloquial term for riddling someone with bullets. In any case, this island was very important because it just so happens to be where the Rocks Pirates were formed, who were led by a man named Rock Stezebeck. A rather curious discovery, as the flagship of the Blackbeard Pirates is known as the Sabre of Zebek. In any case, this island was invaded by one Gecko Moria, searching for his subordinate Absalom, although he had long since been killed by Moria's arrival, and his devil fruit, the Suke Suke no Mi, was now possessed by Shiryu. In addition to this, it was revealed that Katarina Devon was the wielder of a mythical Zoan type fruit that allows her to transform into a nine tailed fox, which, amongst other things, allows her to mimic the appearance of others in a similar manner to that of the Mane Mane no Mi. Blackbeard then invited Moria to join his crew, and later the group set sail to swiftly acquire a certain something before the Marines could get their hands on it. Although what that something is has yet to be revealed. Some more fun facts about the Blackbeard Pirates. In One Piece Green Secret Pieces, it was revealed that the Blackbeard Pirates originally had radically different names and appearances to their eventual incarnations, with Marshall D. Teach originally being named Everything D. Teach to point out just one. Rather interestingly, the 10 Titanic captains I mentioned earlier only consist of nine official members that we are aware of. And for that one unaccounted for captain, it has been widely speculated that it is Kuzan, who was confirmed to have affiliated himself with the Blackbeard Pirates following the events of the Dress Rosera, meaning that the Blackbeard Pirates have at least temporarily incorporated a former Marine Admiral to their side, which is pretty terrifying stuff right there. And finally, a truly useless fact, not including the captain himself, of the original batch of Blackbeard Pirates, the award for lowest bounty goes to Jesus Burgess, who commanded a mere 20 million berries. And that pretty much does it for the Blackbeard Pirates. Let me know what you guys think of this terrifying band of misfits in the comments below. And if you're keen for regular One Piece content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos and even subscribe to the channel for regular One Piece goodness delivered straight to your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.